Today is October 29th and Timothy and I are on day three of our backcountry trip and this morning we just bumped a herd of five does right here. They all ran down, way down there. We were just looking to see if any one of them had antlers but all just ears so no legal deer. I already shot my dope in the last video so does are off the list. Just looking for bucks now so we're gonna loop around this side this big old mountain right here and glass the other side we'll see if there's a buck that shows up on the other side all right so we made it to our second glassing knob and we were just glassing around and earlier timothy and i we found some bigger than deer tracks and i was like hmm maybe moose because here i haven't really seen elk so we got over here i i was just glassing around and i just see this shining sword in the sunlight i'm like what the heck is that and I'm glassing around and he turned his head. It's a bull elk. Rifle elk season opens in two days. And this guy is on public land and anybody with a rifle tag can come and shoot this guy. I need to range how far that is. That's far, but you can definitely close the distance a little bit. You can definitely close the distance. 902 yards. Wow, what a gorgeous animal. Look how majestic he is. This trip has been nothing but spectacular, man. So many deer, so many moose, and now a bull elk. All right, guys, so we were just looking at elk. I turn back a glass on our side and up at the very skyline of this ridge, there's two spikes and one doe. Timothy's open for any buck. I can shoot the other spike if I wanted to, but I'm gonna pass. So we're just gonna see if we can get Timothy on one. From here to the deer is 709 yards. So we're gonna try to bomb up this ridge right here, try to close hopefully a minimum of 400 yards. And hopefully we can uh, get a shot at one of these spikes. They're going to crest over, so. Yes, we are doing a vertical 700 yard sprint after two 10 inch deer that's how much dedication we have right now oh man let's come on let's do this got over here and nowhere to be found so i think what happened is they actually just stuck a little bit higher to the timberline edge up there and i think they're just bedded somewhere up there either that or we just bumped them which i don't think we did but i hope we didn't so right now we're just kind of chilling it's hot the deer are probably going to be bedded today's like 52 degrees for the high tomorrow's going to be 57 degrees which is extremely warm and so our best chance right now is just the morning and the evening hunt unless we just happen to see a random deer running by it but that's the update so we're just going to chill and we'll see what goes on from here Hopefully. 
him saw those deer right up this little ridge and they crested over to the other side so we don't see them anymore I just glassed up a doe she's way down there The sun is long gone and while Timothy and I were still being occupied by those two deer that we glassed up on the ridge and the two deer that I glassed down low, I looked back right here. This stump right here is the stump that I used as a rest to shoot my doe yesterday. And I looked right here and it was just a big black blob. I'm like, what the heck? That wasn't there earlier. So I threw my binos up. Sure enough, it's a big old black bear. And I thought he was going to go down and feed on my doe. But it turns out he just crossed right here and then he side hill and then he, I don't know where he went, but he was on a mission. He was moving fast. So Timothy and I, we, we were literally up here and then we hiked all the way down this ridge, got to right here to see if we can catch that bear in time. But man, he, he was moving fast. So he probably already went over the other, the other side of this mountain right here while we were still working our way down made the trek back to camp a lot further than it should have been we were planning to just stay up here and then just crest over and drop down to camp but since we came all the way down here it makes it a little bit more complicated to go back to camp but oh well what a rodeo all right it's the final day of our backcountry trip and we were supposed to do a morning hunt today and then basically come back to camp and pack up and leave, but uh, that was like four o'clock this morning and the wind started picking up and the wind is still roaring. I don't know, it's also kind of dangerous because we are kind of surrounded by trees. And so if a tree decides that it wants to fall over, it might not be so good. So we're basically just gonna wake up and then clean up camp and then just get out of here before any trees decide to fall over all right so timothy and i we just cleaned up camp and so we're just doing the final touches to cleaning up camp right now but uh, i want to briefly go over my pack system because i get a lot of questions regarding my pack and so as you guys can see here i have it laid out right now and the backpack i'm using is an exo mountain gear k2 3500 the thing that is unique about these higher end backpacks is that the bag is essentially separate for the frame. So this is the bag itself. This is where I have all my camp. And this right here is the frame. And you can see I can detach it like this. And what that allows me to do is I can leave all my camp clothes, food, water, camera stuff in the bag. And then I have this dedicated meat shelf where I can put the meat so I don't have to worry about stuffing my meat in with my bag and worry about not having a bag that's not big enough so since I have my meat strapped onto my frame eventually I'm gonna secure it even more once I put this bag back over it but with this little crib load panel you can see the meat is pretty secured onto the frame and then after that I can just throw my pack over and then cinch the bag to the frame using some straps and then that way I don't have to worry about again running out of space because my bag wasn't big enough to fit extra meat and stuff like that so these are expensive backpacks but once you have a backpack that can do this right here it is a game changer so right now as you guys can see this bag it's pretty full it's got all my stuff in there spotting scope and whatnot and I don't have to worry about this bag being not big enough I could just strap my meat onto my frame and good to go. Yeah. One, one. Oh. Strap. Got it. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, we are officially loaded up. Meat, I kind of threw my rain fly on there because it was starting to rain. Weather forecast lied, it was supposed to be sunny today, but I guess for the pack out, we're not complaining about overcast. Tim's all loaded up too. So basically got to get my gun way back down to the truck we go. Woo! 
Where are you taking me, bro? That was the hard part. Huh? That was the hard part. Are you sure? Yeah. Let's hope so. We have officially packed out that dough and right now we're gonna cook up some venison chili using that meat that we just harvest, harvested from the dough. Earlier this year, uh, one of my viewers named Brad actually sent me some stuff to support me on my catch and cook videos in which this video is kind of a catch and cook. It's not really a catch and cook, it's more like a hunt and cook. And so I just wanna show you guys a little gadget that we're gonna be using to cook up some chili and this isn't a sponsored video this is just a video or this is just to thank my viewer brad for being kind-hearted and not only sending me one thing not two not three but four different pieces of equipment to support me on my catch and cook so right here we have a coleman triton uh, stove it's a dual stove so you can cook uh, two different things at the same time this is my first time using it so we're going to test it out right now on some venison chili Behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah.
All right, folks. Well, there is some fresh venison chili topped with some awesome toppings such as garlic herb bread, green onions, Frito chips, cheddar cheese. So this right here is just uh, one variation of about a million different ways you can cook chili. Uh, this is just my preferred way to do it. I like to keep things simple. Just to briefly go over the process, it's basically uh, just ground venison. So you basically just grind your venison meat. For this particular recipe right here, I just did some diced onions and some diced bell peppers. Basically cook those in some oil and once the onion are like a fluorescent color, throw in your meat, brown the meat, and then salt and pepper your meat just enough so that if you take a bite out of the meat, it like it's good enough to just eat like that. So that's about how you gauge how much salt and pepper you put in there. And after you brown the meat, you throw in your uh, diced tomatoes and your beans and then uh, you uh, mix it all around and then add in your chili powder. The chili powder, I just eyeball it and I just go according to taste. So it just varies depending whether you like a lot of chili powder or you don't. And then from there, it's just tasting as you go. If it's not salty enough, just add more salt. If there's not enough chili powder, just add more chili powder. The general rule of thumb is just add uh, chili powder and salt on the lower end. That way, uh, it's a lot easier to just add chili powder because if you over salt it or you add too much chili powder it's a little bit more complicated to get it back to tasting right so after you do that let it simmer add it to a bowl and top it with whatever ingredients you want there's nothing better than chili in cold weather like this go and dip it into the chili get some meat get some cheese in there green onions chips whatever and just look at that that is a a bite that you can relate to heaven mmm so good